My grandmother Mary, my dad's mom, was a fierce and formidable woman. Widowed early, she was raising eight children alone in a Philadelphia row house. Times were tough. Money was tight. One day, Mary got word that her two youngest sons would need to leave school. The tuition was late, very late. The leaders of the school, ironically named the Little Sisters of the Poor, <laughs> decided that it was time for the boys to be expelled. Mary was outraged. How dare they? That outrage turned to white, hot, sharp anger. Mary marched to the school, knelt down on the church steps beside the school and prayed, but she didn't pray for money or charity or even for the strength to bear it all. Mary prayed for fire. <laughs> she prayed that the church and maybe the school beside it would burn. <laughs> Not long after, it did. In 1950, my mom was living in a neighborhood, also in Philadelphia, not far from my dad's neighborhood. Like many young girls of her time, it was my mom's job to care for her younger siblings, and often her job was to make them lunch. One day she realized that the bread bin was empty, not an unusual occurrence for a family of five. So she decided that she was gonna to go to the corner store and buy some bread. She called out to her mom, who was upstairs, cleaning with the littlest child beside her in a playpen. She also called out to her little brother who was in the basement playing with some of his pals. She'd be right back. In a few minutes, Sissy was on her way to the store and then back again with that loaf of bread. As she turned the corner, she saw a horrifying sight. There were fire trucks parked on her street. In fact, right in front of her house. She ran the last half a block to find her mother, her younger brother, and her baby sister on the sidewalk, shaken and scared. What in God's name had happened? It would be determined later that her redheaded, rambunctious five-year-old younger brother had started the fire, although to this day he has no recollection, playing with sticks, lighting them on fire to make a torch, undoubtedly like the movies he had seen. A few years later, my parents met. They met at a friend's home, also in Philadelphia. They married. They had four children. They moved to the suburbs. And for five decades, they lived a life that was relatively uneventful, happy but uneventful. In 1995, my husband and I bought a house that we wanted to raise a family in. Coincidentally, it was right across the street from a huge brick, very ornate firehouse. We didn't really think much of it at the time. In fact, the only time that the firehouse really impacted on our existence was in the middle of the night. We would hear the bay doors open, we'd, we would hear the trucks roar to life, and as the trucks pulled out of the station, we could see the lights reflecting on our bedroom walls and we would think, heroes, and we would roll over and go back to sleep. In January, on a bright cold morning, in 2007, my father got up, poured himself a cup of coffee, filled up the tea kettle, lit it, getting ready to make his morning instant oatmeal, something we had seen him do for decades. He sat down to read the sports page, but the kitchen was a little chilly that morning. So also as we had seen him done for decades, my father got up and turned each of the burners on the stove on, thinking that it would warm up the kitchen a little bit while he read the sports page. After a little while, his coffee had gone cold. Why not put it in the microwave, which was right above the stove? As my father leaned over to either put the cup in or take the cup out, we don't really know, his robe caught on fire. The pajamas underneath it were also set ablaze. Now, my father was always very good at an emergency. It was a trait that we admired so much in him. So he very quickly removed his robe. He removed his burning pajamas. He removed all of his clothes, as a matter of fact. And he also stomped 
on the clothing to put the fire out with those navy blue corduroy slippers that we had seen him wear for two to three decades. My father was burned on his torso, his shoulder, and his arm. He would not survive those burns. Nearly two years ago, on a bright summer night, almost at sunset, the sky a beautiful blazing orange, I watched my son leave my house. He ran across the street to the firehouse. You see, he had fulfilled a lifelong dream of becoming a firefighter. He had watched the comings and goings of the fire trucks for years. When he was a toddler, he could hear the faint stirrings of a fire call even before we could. And he would run, little legs pumping, catapult himself on the couch to watch the action out our front window. All he ever wanted was to be a firefighter. So two, two years ago, here I am standing in that same front window watching my son run across the street. I watched him throw on his helmet, get on the truck, and as the truck pulled out of the station, he waved to me. And I could see that smile. He was so proud. He was so proud to be part of the brotherhood that he had wanted to be part of his entire life. I was so proud of him. As I turned away from the window, it suddenly struck me. My son, my precious boy, was repaying some tragic karmic debt. He was putting out the fires that had been started decades before. All of that anger, all of that angst, all of that vengeance, all of that sorrow, he was putting out with a deluge of water. Blessed, blessed water.